studied learning styles quite a few years ago from Northeastern and that was probably an eye-opener because not every student learns the same, not every student inquires the same. Some students want a solid answer, some students want all the answers and there's an in-between there and when I, when I find those students that, that need uh, more information from their questions, that's when I like to, to really take them through the inquiry steps. I like to, to show them how to find their information. I like to know uh, what they know about their information. That's one of my first questions when they come in to inquire. What do you know? If they're working on a um, report, one of my first questions that I ask them, if they're coming from an English class, for instance, what is your thesis statement? Their thesis statement will oftentimes change dramatically from day one to finished product. And that's kind of how their inquiry step changes. From day one, they'll come in and, and for instance, they will say, I need to find out more about the Civil War. What do you need to find out about the Civil War? Well, I need to know everything about the Civil War. Well, how do we narrow that down? We narrow that down by, by asking them more questions. The more questions we ask them, the finer we get that point, and they get down to a fine point. Well, I really wanted to know more about Oklahoma in the Civil War. Because my parents told me that one of my relatives, one of my great-great-grandparents, was in the Civil War. So now we're getting down to the question. We started out with the broad question of the Civil War. And now the real question that they want to know, they want to know more about their family or their family ties to the Civil War. So that is how I get the inquiry question down. I try to ask them as many questions as they ask me. I try to get them involved in the results. I try to get them involved in the research, very much so. And I try to get them involved enough that they want to know about the question that they are asking me. It's their question to begin with. It's not my question. I just try to work my questions in, into what they need to know. I think for a, a research librarian or even a high school librarian such as myself, that is one of the most important things that I teach them. I want to teach them how to ask questions. I want to teach them how to get from the broad question down to the narrow question, and I want to teach them those steps. Those steps can in involve um, hard copy books. They can involve something as easy as an encyclopedia. They can involve something as easy as letting them go on to Google. I like to take them into databases. I like to tell them that they can do interviews with people. I like to try to tell them that the entire scope of, of inquiry, so to say, is something that is so broad that they can, can make it as broad as they want, or they can make it as narrow as they want. But they're going to have to come down to that basic inquiry question that they've asked, and they're going to have to narrow their research into that question. I think most students that I see in my small library that want to inquire in books, um, the hook that has got them to this point is usually a movie or something they've seen on YouTube, something they've uh, learned through Facebook, their friends on Facebook, they may have a friend on Facebook that is uh, halfway across the country. And all of a sudden on their Facebook pages they start talking about, for instance, one of the Hunger Games books. Then they read the book. Then they go see the movie. And they come in and say, oh, Miss Bennett, I have seen that movie. It's really great. And I said, yes, Miss, very much like the book. I have the other two books that go in that series. Would you like to read them? Oh, they say, I didn't know there were a couple more books. I said, yeah, they are, and they're, they're better or just as good as the first one. So 
things that are, are so simple as a, as a movie or, or a, a conversation on Facebook or a conversation on maybe one of their Twitter accounts. That will get them hooked in here. If I can get them in here, I can find things that are similar to what they've seen, what they've written about, what they've heard about. Um, I just need that small space going into what their interests are. And at that point, I can expand what they will be reading into books that are just like what they've seen on TV, just like what they've seen in the movies, or something that's very similar. And it's really hard to get some of the kids, um, some of the reluctant readers, I guess. It's really hard to get them into reading something, but those are some of the main hooks that I, that I have found. The inquiry skill that they take beyond high school, for those that are college bound, it's, it's all encompassing. They will take that onto the next level. Hopefully they will take that onto to their teachers and to, to their librarians at the college that they choose. Um, hopefully that will expand to them all the resources that are available through those universities and colleges. The students that, that choose not to continue their education into college or into uh, the military or into uh, an associate's degree of some kind that just want to go out in the work field, hopefully that will expand the inquiry. Um, any job that they possess after high school, if they want to advance in that profession that they've chosen, they're going to have to be inquisitive about everything. And to do that, they're going to have to learn how to do their research. And hopefully they've got a basis for that research here at the high school. I think one thing that is so important to me, and, and it's the thing that I try to stress the most to, to my teachers that I work with, is to collaborate with them. To me, collaboration with teachers is so integral. And it's, it's, even after as many years as I have been a high school librarian, that is one of the, the first things when I have a new teacher that comes in, that I go to that teacher and say, please let me help you. Um, I love to do research. I love to help your kids. Let me come to your classroom. Let your kids come down to the library. Let me help you in any way that I can to get through uh, the objectives that you're going to be teaching in your class. To me, collaboration with the teachers um, is integral. If you can only collaborate with, oh, I'm trying to think. If you can only collaborate with one out of every four teachers in the building that you're in, I think you've scored a home run. Because if you're successful in collaborating with teachers, you're going to be successful in teaching kids inquiry. It just goes hand in hand. There's no other way to do it. You have to have willing teachers before you can have students that want to inquire about what's going on. If, if you have a small group of teachers in any discipline that you can work with uh, to collaborate with, it just, it just opens up the entire world to your students. I love for the students to come in with their teachers. I love to go to their classrooms. Um, because so many teachers have as much technology in their rooms as I probably have in my media center, sometimes it's much easier for me to go down to their rooms. And it's a, more com it's a better comfort zone for the students and a better comfort zone for the teachers. And that's something that I've learned over the years. Um, if I go to them, then it's easier for me to bring them back to me. And they feel more comfortable in both places. I, I want the library to be a place where they feel comfortable, where a student feels comfortable, but I also want it to be a place where the teacher feels comfortable. And, and you get into their comfort zone, uh, it, if you have to go to their room, 
to lead them back like little ducks, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> if, then you should do that. Don't just stay behind your desk in your library expecting people to come to you to learn how to do inquiry and to learn how to uh, research and to learn how to collaborate with you. You have to go out to the teachers, you have to go out to the students, you have to make yourself visible. You can't become um, an invisible person behind a desk. You just can't do that. You have to go out and find these people and you have to let them know that you're here to help them and that you want to help them and you want to make them successful, not only here, but when they leave here.